Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 50 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pengasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you here. It's a glorious autumn day here in the Bay, and you can see that the fall colors are in full glory. It looks fantastic. Say, we're looking across the subject of today's build, and that is the East Bay Meadows part of town. This East Bay Meadows area, which nestles in kind of in between the, uh, you know, our original Yacht Club district over here. And of course, we've got our, our salt mining operation out here just across this little river. And this big patch of area here is, is all fertile land. It's fertile land. And then uh, we've got some just kind of you know, blank space over here as well. But the reason I wanted to focus my attention on this is because as I was going through some of the city economy tabs and the production tabs specifically, we've got a bit of a gap in terms of our food production in the city. And I want to try and rectify that, see if we can build something out that's going to really help support our city for future growth. Now, I've got something going on in here with this big bus depot, and it's just this big block that's been sitting there for, well, probably 20 episodes or so. I'd like to kind of bust that up a little bit and see if I can tuck it down into this little corner down here. Now that we can take all these extra buildings, these side buildings, and, and disassociate them with the main building, it might be fun to build something out a little bit more organic and unique here. And then with all this fertile land down here along the riverbeds, I think we can build something really you know, beautiful and elegant in this space while maximizing our, our production. And then down in this area here, I think if we can incentivize this, uh, like some food production companies to come in here, that would be a big boon to the city's economy as well. All right. Well, I just threw a lot at you guys. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. Okay, so I jumped across town here back to where we were in our last episode when we built out the South Pass Isle, which is this nice little residential community over here. And then I wanted to do so because you have this nice little farming area that we built in over here back in episode 15, quite a long time ago. And it's a cute, quaint farming area with all these little runoff ditches and some you know, additional trees along the way. I'm not going to use this as my inspiration from our new build, but I thought it would be a really good little backdrop as I pop open our economy tab here. So let's do that. Let's take a look at the city economy and let's jump over to production. As I look at the production tab, you can see down here, we've got a bit of a surplus for grain, uh, 35 tons a month. We've got a little bit of a, a surplus for livestock at 15 tons. And then of course, vegetables, uh, even smaller surplus at 13. I think we can improve that quite a bit. And while we've got the surpluses, what's really alarming to me, and, and maybe you guys are seeing this in your cities as well, you should check it out. Go down to the materials, goods tab. And then if I scroll down to the food items, so you've got beverages, you've got convenience food, and you've got food, you can see we've got some massive shortfalls in that area. And so we are probably spending a lot of money to import this into the city. I'd like to see if I can change that today. And I would do that by building out a bunch of rich farmland, you know, specifically as I look at, say, the convenience food area, it requires grain and it looks like it requires poultry or livestock, I should say. And then the next one in the food area is vegetables and livestock. So if we get some livestock farms going, kind of in that secondary space, the non-fertile land, and then focus our energies on grain and uh, and grain and vegetables, and then we should be able to build out at least kind of a, another surplus area. And then if we drop in some industry buildings right nearby, hopefully with our tax rate, what I did was I did I came back in here in our industrial space, and I lowered the tax rates on the, the raw materials, on grain, on vegetables. And I think I did that on livestock too, if I scroll down here and find it, Let's see livestock. Yes, I lowered those down. So the, hopefully that creates an incentive for some of these, you know, these, these complex industries to pass on the savings to those businesses and will incentivize some of those small businesses to jump in and start producing food and convenience food. All right, well, let's jump back across the bay here and get to work. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to move this big bus depot out of here. You can see this big rectangular bus depot that we built way back in, oh, it's got to be like episode five or so. Back when we built out the Yacht Club District, I just kind of dropped this in here because it was unused space just so we could get our little fledgling bus network up and running in the city. And you can see we built this in the old style where you have the main building here and then all of your upgrade buildings are just attached directly to that unit. I think we can do a little better. And I'd like to just kind of come down here and make better use of this corner down here, this little notch down here. 
and spread these buildings out, these extra garages out a little bit from the main building, just so it has a little bit more of a, I don't know, an organic look and feel to it, as opposed to this big amorphous block. So the first thing I need to do is I need to move that thing out of here. I want to keep this thing intact, though. I don't want to just destroy it because I've got a large bus network in the city. And you can see I've got 69 buses that are using, that are being, you know, serviced out of this building here. So I don't want to disrupt that entirely. So we'll just slide this down the road for a little bit. Then we'll get to work in this space here. And I'll start by destroying this road here. And let's come in with our terraformer uh, level terrain tool and just kind of grab an elevation here that's, I don't know, consistent with the road. Press this all out. Nothing too extreme. Just want to make sure that I've got uh, enough room there. And then let's grab a two lane road. Uh, let's uh, turn off the synaptic guidelines and maybe just come straight out of this one here. I want to run all the way up through here and then come down a little ways, maybe to about, ah, that's probably fine. Something like that. And then let's run some alleyways off of here. We're going to go this direction, uh, like this for now and like this for now. And let's see if I've got a little spot there where I can drop in a bus depot. So when I grab the bus depot and drop this in here, let's see if I can get this little road to center up on the green street. Okay, it's not perfectly centered, so I think I can kind of nudge this around a little bit. If I relocate, turn off my snapping, rotate you into place. Boy, that took some work. All right, so now we've got that in place, and you can see it lines up, this center line lines up with Green Street there. I like that. Now let's uh, let's frame up this, um, this depot a little bit with our little alley roads. We'll just come down. Hmm. I guess we'll use this one right here. Uh, I want to turn off snap to sides of the building too, just so I don't get this dragged into there accidentally. Uh, can I make it all the way around the building here? Let's just see. Oh, it looks like I can. Yeah, let's do that then. Let's come all the way out and around. Um, and then we'll bring that one back up into here. And so we've got it framed up. In fact, wow, now that I'm looking at this, let's do this. Let's come down one, one closer to that freeway. Let's just go down one more. Yeah, let's do like this. In fact, let's even bring this out a couple. Yeah, that's and that's fine. We'll put in like a little retaining wall kind of down along here just to finish this off. Does that look straight? Uh, it looks like it's it's not level. Okay, well, I can finish that up or fix that up later on. All right, so now that we've got that in place, we can put in a two lane road here. And I want to use this two lane road just to come out so that um, I can have a little space in between it and the main building of the depot. And uh, then I can you know, kind of decorate in that little center spot there. Let's come out with some alley roads here. We'll just extend this up, bring this up in this direction. I'm going to turn off this grid, uh, run out to, well, let's just see if we can come out to about here. I don't know how far away from the main building I can get, but we're going to find out. And then coming in the other direction, let's do something similar on this side. Just kind of run up in this direction for now and then trim off this piece here. Yeah, okay. And then let's start dropping in our extra bus garages. We've got an extra garage here. And how far up here can I get? I got to turn my snapping all back on. All right, so that's as far as I can get. If I put this here. Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't line up perfectly. Well, maybe I'll turn my snapping back off. And let's see, which is the roadside? This one? I think it is. And then we'll just run right up there and see if we can line that up perfectly with this center line here. There you go. We've got one in place. Then maybe we'll just take this little alley road, run this out like so. Put in our next garage. We'll turn the snapping back on right here. Yeah, okay. I like that. And then we could probably drop one into this space here. Why not? Let's put one in here. Yeah, bring you up as far as you can go. Ow, we can go right up to the edge there. Use it, make full use of this road like that. And then we'll come over to the other side and see. Yeah, oh, can't go all the way to the edge. But here's what we could do. I think we could come back here like so. Then orient it so it's kind of facing up. Oh, it does fit. Look at that. Just barely. Okay, cool. I like that. And then 
Uh, I could probably get two more in here because I need six, I think. That's what the old one had, the old station or depot had. So I think I can get two more in here. And I put one there so it lines up perfectly there. And then another one here. Let's do this. Let's put another alley in right like this. And put our sixth one in facing that alley. Boom. So that way, all the buses are coming out from a different direction. You know, you've got them kind of oriented towards different little alley roads and streets and so forth. I just think it feels a little bit more organic. It's a little more spread out. And now we've got space to come in here and maybe do a little, uh, just do a little retaining wall work and stuff around in here. And then we can also come in here and zone off some industrial buildings. So if I came back in here and went two by two, and then uh, let's see, two by two there. Yeah, and, and, and by doing so, yeah, okay. And by doing so, I think what we can do is just have a kind of a, a dense little feel in here that's got this industrial look and feel that's this bus depot is kind of embedded into. All right, cool. I like the way that that looks. On to building the farms. Our inspiration for today's build comes from this circular pivot irrigation technique. You see this pretty commonly in the kind of the western part of the midwestern part of the United States. <laughs> that was a mouthful, right? So you think about the, the big, what we call the fruited plain that is, sit, sits between the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains in the United States. And the further west you travel in that plain, the drier it kind of gets. And so you start seeing states like Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Texas. They use this technique. And they do that because the soil itself is rich and fertile, but they just don't get a lot of rainfall. And so what they're doing is they're maximizing the, the soil fertility by pulling water uh, out of some of the maybe river resources that happen to be running by. And you see this up and down the North Platte River. So we're going to take inspiration from that and we're going to jump into this space here. Now, before I do that, I want to show you guys what does this look like? You've got a natural resources tab here that shows, look at this big fertile land area down in here. And that's why I selected this area for the farming. It looks just fantastic and this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's jump down in here and we can start building out our pattern. I want to start with a gravel road. I'm going to turn off my snap to guidelines and I just want to pick a spot somewhere kind of down in the middle here and maybe start about two squares off of this road. I want to draw down about 192 meters. Yeah, let's do that. And then uh, I want to take the continuous curve. I'll turn the grid back off and we're just going to snap out here and bring this around and close that circle. And that circle now is gonna serve as the basis for that, that farm, this, this beautiful lush green spot. Now, in order to repeat this pattern, what I wanna do is I wanna find the centerpiece of that circle, and I wanna draw out in this direction 192 meters, and then down 192 meters as well. And now if I trim off this piece here, I can snap another circle into its place. And now let's repeat that technique. Just do it one more time for our third circle. I find the middle here, out 192, up 192, which should bring us back to here, trim off the piece, and then snap the loop. Wonderful. Yeah, see, that I think that looks great. And what, what we'll end up having here is this kind of staggered design pattern that makes its way through here. I'll put a rectangular farm in here in the middle and then continue that pattern, maybe for you know three or so more circles down in here. Now, not to worry, this whole area is gonna be uh, taken up with farming as a uh, as a resource. So it won't just be in the circles, but it's going to have the illusion of being just in the circles. I think that's going to be the cool technique here. So let's uh, let's take a look at our, our next step, which is let's come in here and we have to cut out notches in these, these little circles. And the reason I have to do that is because I want to make sure that I can thread in the, um, the farmland in there. So maybe uh, let's think about this. I probably want to have farm coming in over here. So let's cut out a notch maybe somewhere here. And then we'll do another one over here. Uh, let's come in from this angle. And then a third one over here. Yeah, something like that. And that should be just fine. That'll allow us to thread the farmlands in there. In fact, now I can come in here and take out these centerpiece roads. And well, I don't want to take them all out. Let's just do this and this. And we'll take, ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a big one. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab a pathway here a raised pathway and I'm going to find kind of the center point area out here close enough we'll just take this off and take this off and I'm just going to eyeball it I'm going to run this oops I don't want to snap to the well maybe I do want to snap to that road because I'm going to pull that road out of there anyhow 
but I'm going to bring this out to, let's say about here and just leave that in place. Do the same thing out of this one. And then the third one will come out of here. Yeah. And that's going to be the kind of the illusion, if you will, of those irrigation systems. In fact, maybe I'll, I'll come back in here in the time lapse and raise those up a little bit so they look like bridges. All right. Fantastic. Now on to the next thing, which is I want to, uh, as you come over here and take a look at this bus station here, let's fire this up real quick. You can see that there are 66 vehicles in use out of the 85 possible. And if I jump back over to the one we just created, there's only one vehicle in use. So let's start forcing the issue. Let's start removing some of these extra garages from this building over here. And if I take away three of them, now it's got a max capacity of 55. So those extra 11 buses have to come from somewhere. I'm hoping they're going to come from over here. So let's, uh, whoop, hi there. Uh, and then uh, we should be able to make better use of this one. All right, cool. I think we're off to a good start here. Let's dive down on in here and start putting in some farms. And I think we'll do that by just grabbing a two lane road here um, and just run off of this big main arterial here. This is a big road and we're going to need it to handle some of our farm and, and in this farming industry traffic. We'll run this road out, say, to about, I don't know, this doesn't have to be perfect, but maybe about there. And then we'll take a gravel road and spring off of that. Now I want to take that gravel road and bring it up so it's, I don't know, pretty close to even with that center circle one there, just something like this probably. And then, and in fact, let's come, let's come in a little closer, closer to this. Maybe I'll bring it out here. Let's do that and trim both of those off. One, two. And then I think I want to come out of here and just kind of draw this out. Maybe, you know, three or four squares. We can grab our specialized industry building and I want to start off with grain farming. Grain farming down in this space, I think is going to be wonderful. And if you look at the coverage circle, you can see there is a, uh, a big circle that covers both of our smaller circles and then in the area immediately around it. And I think this is going to work well for us. So I want to do this. I, uh, before I drop that building into place, I want to come in and cut out this, 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 this. All of these little extra pieces that exist already. Yeah, like that. Now, if we set our specialized building down in here, Get it up nice and close there. That's fine. Yeah, maybe right there. Now I can start the process of threading this all the way around through this farmland here and creating a wonderful farmland area. So why don't you guys sit tight and let me paint this one out and then you can kind of see what this is going to look like. All right, hang tight. All right, now before I close this loop, I want you guys to take a quick look down here where it says harvestable resources, 318 tons. This is a big, big area. And I'm really excited about that because as you recall, we have a you know, pretty significant need for grain and produce in this area. So I'm gonna complete this area and now you can see what it looks like as soon as I click on this. There you go. So now we've got this big area that's painted in here and then we can come back in with a second farm up there so let's do that let's uh let's uh let's appreciate what we've done so far and then head on into the next farm i see a nice natural attach point here with this roundabout so let's come in here with a two-lane road and uh let's um just snap right off of this just bring it out i don't know sure 48 meters that's fine and then let's see i'd ultimately i think Think, let's just see how big the circle area is for the specialized industry for vegetables. So I'd like that to kind of come in here and make sure it covers off on everything that we've done so far, but I can afford to come back a little bit. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I am going to put in a, an anchor road that's kind of right down along the shore here. Uh, maybe something like this. Let's run this out in this direction. 
And then let's see if we can't get that farm in there. Vegetable farm? Yeah, it fits into there. Ooh. You know what I might need to do is I meet, might need to come in here. And before I do that, let's just tidy up this line here. In fact, I can probably bring this back a little bit. And, uh, and then shift some of the resources into this farm. So sit tight. Yeah, that's probably better. And now we can we can bring in our specialized whoops, specialized industry vegetables. Bring that farm into here. Let's just see what kind of coverage area I can get. Yeah, I can cover off all all of this. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably going to be just fine here. Now what I'll do is I'll start the process of painting this farm in, and this is going to take a little bit. So why don't you guys sit tight? All right, now again, before I close this one off, you can see that we have 109, 169 tons of harvestable resources. That's a lot of vegetables. So let's go ahead and close this off to finish this up. Yeah, there you go. And then let's, let's put our road back in here. We need to do that. We need to finish off our little gravel road. We'll just run this right down along here. And uh, yeah, actually, you know what? Let's run it to about here. We'll come out from this side with our gravel road. Yeah, to about here, and then we can just bend that curve in there nice and neat. So we'll turn this line on. Yeah, and that's just a little little country road that's in there. In fact, I could probably drop in, in even one more farm down in here if we wanted to make use of that. But yeah, I like the way that that's looking. It's it's really kind of a, got a cool look uh, about it. Now, the thing that we're going to do here is to the trick that we're going to use is we're going to paint in these circles. So. You can see, oh wow, we've got some farms popping up there in the middle of it. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to grab the specialized industry tool here and I want to be able to drag these nodes. I'm going to turn off snapping, all of my snapping. I want to drag this node out here so it's a little bit closer. And I'll do the same thing here. Yeah, and we can we can come in and massage these so that you know this arm appears to be in the center of more. But yeah, this is this is going to be kind of cool. Um, now, what we'll do next is we're going to come in with our wonderful surface painter. One of the things I discovered is that as you're painting with these surfaces over uh, industrial areas, you can actually paint this in and it'll remain over the top of the surface. It's pretty cool. There, yeah, you can see how that fills in. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so now you've got this big green circle that's out here in the middle of our farm. And as, as we as we zoom out, you'll start to see these, these green elements fill in here. And I think it's going to look really cool. Yeah, I like the way that that's shaping up. All right, let's continue working. And I'm going to start by, let's trim this road off here. And we'll cut these little guys out of there because we don't need those any longer. We now know where this is. Those were my keep out signs, by the way, just to let me know not to build in here. Uh, and then let's start by, mm, let's take a gravel road here. And then I want to build out some, some circles in here, but maybe not, maybe not these great big ones. Maybe I'll do smaller ones down in here. I don't know. What do you think? Let's do something kind of fun. Um, if I can come up right up against this road here, maybe let's say here. Yeah, maybe something like that. And just come down, I don't know, one... 28 because the other ones were I think 144 as I recall and then spin this circle and then come down you know again I know it's about 24 meters start spinning another circle cool that looks pretty neat ooh you know what we should take this and can I come out of the center here I'm gonna maybe turn off all my snaps just run straight out of the middle here and then I want to cut that off, cut that off, cut that out. We'll come out of here now and just run out 
yeah, I mean, something like this. I need to figure out where I'm going to put my little farm house. And uh, maybe the best plan is, let's turn this and this off. Best plan might be just to come out here and then drop that in there like that. And then I got to cut my notches into my circles here. So let's cut one notch. Let's do here and we'll do another one here. Yeah, it's pretty close to centered. I like it. Okay. And then uh, we've got our farm here that we'll put right there. Okay, cool. Now let's turn our attention on some other circles over here. Now, if I come up with our little uh, road, what did we say it was uh, across here? This is um, 128, I think. Let's go in 64. So right about there. We'll go up 64 there. I think it's there. We'll go up 128. I'm going to go up 136 there. And then I'll take this and snap this out and bring it back around so it doesn't quite connect. Uh, 201 right there. That's the spot. And I'm trying to just kind of keep it even with what we've got going on in the other one. So let's spin this around, click that into place. Yeah, okay, cool. And then from here, we just come down, what was it, about 24 or so? 24 meters. And then we spun this around. There we go. I wonder if I could even add another one down in there. I bet I could. All right, so now we've got a variety of little circles in there. We have to cut our notches in. So let's clear this out and this, 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 and this, and let's cut some notches in. Okay, and now let's put in our little uh, pavement paths, just like we've been doing before. Yeah, just like that. All right, so with that framework in place, let's just jump down over here into this space. And this is where I want to put in some livestock farms, kind of down in this space here. And then I want to build in some food-based industry down in here, at least incentivized food-based industry. You know, now that we set up our taxes in, as uh, to make it attractive, I think those will start to spring in. Now, I, I was eyeing this little spot right here, this little notch as potentially a place where we would build in our cross street. So let's do this. Let's come in here and make a crossing road that comes from here. I just start right here and just run all the way straight through here. I'm gonna take a gravel road, spring out in this direction. Yeah, I like that. And then let's, before we jump across the street and start working on those livestock farms, let's paint in a little bit of industry. Let's go a two by two. And then we'll just kind of see what kind of industry pops in here. What is this? Lato Electronics? No. Full skill grinding? No. Rumel? I don't know. And pile stacks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say no on on all of those. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just see what pops in. Now I might have to come in here and play Yaksu. That's a beverage company, I think. Uh, onshore. I don't know. Uh, Leto Electronics. So I might have to you know continue to play Whack a Mole a little bit until we get what we want. Notes, notes, paper. Hmm. Wolmsburgs. So I'll do that during the detailing time lapse, but you guys get the idea. And then let's also take a look at this big bus depot that we've got here. Remember, this has been feeding us a lot of buses and we got 50 vehicles in use there. And then what's this one down over here have now? 19, it's up to 19. So I think we can force the issue by taking this guy and just destroying him. Okay, so that's, that's a good place for us to start. All right, let's see here, what's next? So we're going to want to come down in here and build out our road frame. And that is not going to be all that complicated, actually. We're going to take this two lane road, maybe run it out just a little bit further. And then we can run this north south road out. Let's do this 104. Come out in this direction. Yeah. And then I'll continue on just a little bit. Put a roundabout in there, too. Just a smaller one. Eh, not the smallest. Maybe a medium sized one because it shouldn't be a very a high traffic area, I don't think. Okay, well, that's cool. And then now let's figure out where we want to have that livestock farm because that's going to be kind of busy up in here. So I'm going to take a livestock farm. See how big a radius that is. It's pretty big. Uh, so if I come out here and get into like right about there, that's probably a good spot there, don't you think? And so, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's bring this road out just a little bit farther. 
We're going to connect to this existing geometry. Something like that. That'll be one livestock farm there. Just want to make sure again. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it'll cover that whole area. And then uh, let's see here. This one, I think we can probably just... Maybe what we'll do is we'll do a second one. Yeah, we do need a lot of livestock. So let's put a second one in, like kind of right in here. And that can take up the difference. So to do that, I want to grab this road here. Let's put this livestock farm in there. And yes, it can reach the whole the whole area there. Okay, that's great news. That's great news. So now we've got that in place. Now I can run this road down into here and connect up to here. And I think we're going to have to start, you know, building out some some framework for some industry down along here. Down in this space here is where we'll start building out our industry framework. And as I was mentioning, as I, I, I started to build that out, I thought, you know, this would be kind of a cool area. I don't want them to be very big. I want them to be very small buildings. So let's just take this out here like so. And we'll tuck in some alleys here. Maybe eh, something like this, where it comes out 64, back down to our main road, 64. Then maybe a two space gap, 64, back to our main road, 64, like so. And then what that's gonna allow us to do is come in here and start dotting in some industry buildings, small little industry buildings right in here. Maybe it's a two by two and let's see here, a two by two on that corner, sure. Yeah, oh, well, it's just a series of two by twos. And then as those pop in, Again, hopefully we'll start getting some, uh, some, there's a beverage company, uh, Patback Medical, so pharmaceuticals. We'll start getting industry that's appropriate to the farming. Now, I have a hunch that they won't all spawn in as, as food producers and beverage producers just yet until we get all of our, our farms up and running. So let's do this. Uh, let me, let me put in one of these livestock farms so you can see what that's going to look like. All right, sit tight. All right, you can see before I snap this one into place here, it's going to be 19 tons of livestock, 19 tons. Uh, so let's go ahead and click that one into place. There you go. Now you've got a big, huge livestock farm. I've given it a little space here so I can add in some trees and shrubs and bushes. Maybe I'll do the same along this edge here to separate it from the big server farm. And there you go. So now we've got that in place. And, uh, you know, honestly, this feels like a really good place for me to jump in and do a time lapse because there's just going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be done here. Let me get the game running again. There needs to be a lot done in this space. I need to paint in my other farms here. And that's probably pretty tedious work just in terms of uh, for you, the viewer. And then uh, we'll do that one there, one there. And then I'll paint in my little circles here, my little green crop rotation circles there. And then uh, I will paint in the second livestock farm down in here. Uh, I'll build in some industry down in this little notch here, down in this notch here, and this notch here. And then uh, hopefully again, this will start to spring up into a good farming, um, you know, just a good farming food and beverage producing area. All right. Well, why don't you guys sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse, and let's catch you right here afterwards. We can recap our sculpture.
right, welcome back, and I give you the all-new East Bay Meadows. <laughs> I do love the way that this one turned out. This one's a lot of fun and a very different build than we've been used, used to here in Pangasus Bay. Something just a little bit more unique. All right, well, there's a lot to unpack, so let's jump right on in. We started off with our bus depot, and as you recall at the beginning of the episode, it was just a big rectangular blob. And we've used a lot of the new mechanics in here that allow us to take extra buildings and attachments and move them away from the main building. You can see our main building sitting up here, and I dropped in this nice little, uh, you know, retaining wall, I guess, or, or barrier that makes its way all the way around it. And since we have that new mechanic, it allows us to take those service buildings or the extra buildings and move them, just relocate them ever so slightly away from the main building, and gives us the opportunity to drop in some new assets. Now, as I dive in here real close, you can see Yaksu, and you can see, mm, I think this is full skill grinding. I'm not sure what this one is, Tiny Tops. Okay, so you've got a lot of industry buildings that are sprouted up in this little notch back in here. And then we took, took this little median here and put some nice trees, palm trees, and some shrubs and bushes along there and carried that theme or that design out here to the entrance and then, of course, along to the approach as well. And that's the beauty of having these new, uh, this new mechanic where you can move your service buildings away from the main building. It just allows you to densify the area a little bit better and give it more of an industrial campus look and feel. All right, that's our bus depot. Making our way down along here into our industry area, and this turned out great. Uh, I had to spend a lot of time knocking down buildings that I didn't want and allowing new buildings to come back into their place. And I'm going to take you down to this little block right here. You can see right at what I'm talking about. Flowers, flowers. Laura, which is petrochemicals. You've got, uh, let's see here. Meaty bits, yeah, leafy greens. So you've got a variety of different food producers in here. Bev Pop, and let's see, Walmsberries, and this is common groceries. So we're starting to get food production here in the city, and that's gonna go a long ways to, I think, kind of closing the gap on some of our budget issues. Now, there's still a long way to go because a lot of these buildings that have popped up here are you know, pharmaceuticals and steel, and, and I even went in and adjusted my tax rates now. And I've brought down all the food producing tax rates down into that two to four percent range and taken all of our steel and automotive up into the, uh, you know, 12 to in some cases, 14 percent. All right, let's jump down here and take a look at our, our series of two livestock farms that are up against the freeway. I think this adds as, as a nice approach element for the freeway. So as you're zipping by on the freeway here, you see these big livestock fields that are out here. And we've got these nice little outbuildings that have spawned up in here. I don't mind that so much in the livestock buildings. Uh, it's, it's where it comes into the vegetable buildings that it, it really kind of wreaks some havoc. But you can see as we make our way down along the freeway here, these big livestock buildings, and they have really increased, uh, increased our livestock productivity in the city. Now let's take a look at our top five design element. Yeah, which is our circular irrigation field and crop arrangement here. And this <laughs> turned out pretty neat. This was a this was a bugger to design in terms of just getting in here and threading out these surfaces all the way around through these circles. Now, there's this mechanic involved here with our vegetable gardens where all these extra outbuildings have spawned. I'm not a big fan of that, and I do hope that Colossal Order removes that at some point in the game where, or at least allows us to turn it off. But let's jump over to a different one here. You can see one of these nice, beautiful, beautiful circular irrigation patterns. And I upgraded the irrigation arm to this big bridge system here. So it looks a little bit more heavy duty. I've got a different texture here. You notice this is a pretty simple, flat green texture here. And then if I jump over to this one, it's got this checkerboard pattern in here. So I just tried to alternate it a little bit here, just so that it gives the appearance that maybe there's you know different types of crops that are being grown. This is all the wheat area, so you're not getting all of those uh, those pesky outbuildings popping up, as is this area over here. Now we had our smaller rings, and you can see I upgraded our irrigation arms into this, um, you know, this kind of this truss work sort of a look and feel to it. So I just, um, I really like the way that that shaped up. I think it turned out better than just the plain sidewalks. And then making our way down along, again, we've got a couple more of the vegetable buildings here. Oh, look at this, they're bringing in the harvest now. You got the big truck here, and you got a little tractor making its way through. So they're hard at work growing more food. All right, well, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it. You're going to want to sit tight, hang out, because we got cinematics coming up at the end, and those are always a, those are always a treat. 
Now, just as a reminder, this channel is nothing without you, and, and you are the wonderful viewers that make it go. So if you saw something that you liked today, please be sure to leave us a comment below. We really love to hear from you. And also, the engagement really helps with our algorithm to distribute our content to a much wider audience, which helps us grow, which helps us keep improving. <laughs> now, a big shout out to all of you guys and gals who are our members both here on YouTube and on our Patreon site. Your generosity is much appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a member, be sure to check out both of those locations. There are a variety of membership options available to all. Also, while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. Okay, with that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>